Aloha friends, it's Robert Stelic with Blue Planet Surf. So a couple of weeks ago I posted a video about the five top reasons to get into wing foiling and uh, one of my biggest reasons is because you can tow yourself into a wave, totally depower the wing, ride the wave and then kick out and catch another one, foil out and get another one. So that's a big bonus you get from wing foiling but a downside that I didn't really mention is that you cannot duck dive that wing under waves. So when you, for example, when you're windsurfing, you can kind of push the mast under water and, and let the white water kind of wash over your gear. But when you're winging, that's not really an option. That big floaty wing will just get dragged by the waves. So ideally you want to just stay away from the impact zone. But of course, it's hard to always avoid that. So in today's video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the joys and the perils of big wave wing foiling. So this was a day when the waves were pretty big, over definitely overhead high. It was a south swell. We've had some good conditions this summer on Oahu. We don't get the super strong winds like they get on Maui, but we do get some nice south swells, uh, a lot of good spots for the south, south breaking waves, um, and decent winds, you know, like not as windy, but uh, nice. this summer has been good for nice steady trade winds. Uh, sometimes, you know, several weeks at a time where you could go out almost pretty much every day um, with the right equipment. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the equipment we use and um, the technique to avoid the impact zone. Like I said, um, you definitely don't want to get be caught inside because there's not much you can do uh, once you're inside the white water um, getting worked. But I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Derek was definitely... Um, charging more than everyone else you can see him just kicking out right before the waves breaking and then this was at the end of his session but i just wanted to show this um, as a learning video um what you know what happens when the wing does get caught by the wave like that i'm going to watch it again in slow motion here so he does like a nice jump off the top of the wave really tweaks it um, has sticks like a perfect landing the board doesn't even touch down on the water stays up on foil but then as the wave gets steeper and faster he's accelerating probably got a little bit of air bubbles on the foil or something but um, there's probably some kind of ventilation or the tip of the wing comes out a little bit he just gets like a little bit of a speed wobble uh, right here I think you see the tip of the foil coming out a little bit and then he just goes forward over the handlebars and the wing you can see the wing just gets caught in the lip and at this point, you really can't do anything like the, the something's going to give, you know, if it's not the leash breaking, it, it's going to be the wing tearing apart. So luckily, the wing held up. But um, here's another view of the same wave. Uh, he falls. And this was Edmund filming from the cliffs. So the wing just gets um, pushed in by the whitewater kind of body surfs in. Um, Derek's just sitting outside. <laughs> and his plan is probably just to catch a wave so he's uh, waiting for the next wave to come along to so he can foil in on the wave but the the wing gets pushed all the way inside and it's not a good place to paddle so um if you if derek started paddling after it he would probably get stuck on the on the shallow reef there so um he's just waiting to catch a wave so he can foil in which is a good idea because once the wind catches that wing and pushes the water out out of it, um, it's just going to start flipping and, and going downwind at a very fast pace. This was Lucas filming with his drone, and he caught Derek. Um, he was able to catch a wave pretty quickly, and then uh, prone foiled it downwind, and the wing's already taking off. I mean, the wing's going downwind at a really fast pace, so Derek's trying to time it so he can come around from behind the wing he doesn't want to um yeah he wants to basically catch it from behind so he kind of goes behind kicks out of the wave and and comes around from behind and um and then jumps on it so super impressive uh, self-rescue there derek uh, we had already all left um and derek was out there last one out there so to be caught in the impact zone like that and make it out without any damage to the wing and self-rescuing the lost wing 
that's a super impressive feat Derek <laughs> pretty awesome so um, I also got caught inside but it was kind of more of a dumb move um, going too far in on a smaller wave without paying attention to what's coming behind and then falling in as I'm trying to kick out and then I realized uh oh the next wave is bigger and it's gonna break outside of me so what I'm trying to do is just get the wing over my head get it flying over my head and then I pop it up over the white water. So let's watch that again in slow motion. I uh, just kind of lift it up over my head and let the wing kind of carry it up. So it kind of flies over the white water. And in this case, it helps to have a leash that's a little bit longer. So the wing has like that freedom to go up a little bit. This was the next wave. So then there was a slightly smaller wave. So I was looking, I saw saw more bigger waves coming, but I thought, okay, there's a little break here. And one good thing about bigger waves is that there's usually a longer interval between the sets. So you have a little bit more time to flip the wing right side up or try to get going in between the waves. So I'm trying to quickly get up. And my, I have a pretty low volume board. It's like a 60 liter board, but I'm able to kind of pump up on foil, get it going. But then as soon as I hit the white water, my foil just stalls out and um, I'm in the water again so I'm quickly flipping it right side up again next wall of white water hits me flips it up uh, upside down again so I'm doing it over and over again until I uh, get a little break in the wave so as long as the waves are coming like that I just try to get the wing back in position so I can fly it over the white water so really there's no way you can get it under the white water and once the white water grabs it, it's usually the um, just the pull is so hard that it's um, basically gonna um, usually some tear something. Um, or, I mean, in that case, you might be okay, but you just get dragged all over the place. So to be able to get back out without any damage to anything, that was um, a really nice uh, feeling. So, but I was definitely a little bit more cautious, cautious after that. And uh, in, in those kind of conditions, you, the strategy is to, to try to get one of the biggest waves. So you want, um, actually, those are the, uh, the safest way to ride it is to get on, stay on the bigger waves, um, but make sure it's one of the last waves of the set so that there's no bigger wave behind it. So you want to be either on the biggest waves or, or the last wave of the set so that whatever's coming behind that wave is going to be smaller. So when you kick out before it breaks, the next one is not going to break further out and, and trap you inside. So as long as you do that, you're you're okay as long as you're kind of able to kick out before the wave is breaking. And Koa was um, definitely, I think this was some of the biggest surf he's ridden. Uh, he's, you know, hasn't really even been foiling that long, but he was definitely um, playing it safe, which is good. And here's Lileo. He, um... You can kind of see like on, on bigger waves, it takes more speed. So you need to have a faster foil just to be able to keep up with the wave. And then also um, the the turns you're doing are usually more like drawn out, kind of powerful, longer carves rather than like snappy, quick turns that you do on smaller waves. So, um, but basically for the higher speeds, you need a, a smaller foil that has less drag and um, basically to be able to keep up with that because a bigger foil with a lot of lift is going to just be um, it's not going to handle the speed it's going to create too much lift and it's going to be hard to um, control on, on a big way big fast moving wave so um, Derek this was before before he wiped out but um, he was definitely ripping so and you know like part of um, pushing it if you want to push it and ride the wave in the critical section sometimes things go wrong and sometimes you you get worked so you just have to be prepared for that and and willing to take a little bit of punishment sometimes this is part of the sport i guess so um but you know most of us we're just trying to be safe i'm going to talk a little bit about this mass too um i, I just got a new mass from access the high modulus carbon mass so um i wanted to uh, sh show it a little bit before we went out in the water had a couple sessions on it so um let's talk a little bit about that it's thinner here and then it tapers to a thicker base but when when i'm going fast i can definitely tell that this mat this is faster has less drag than the aluminum mass which is like 19 millimeters thick 
So just having that thinner mass you know, makes a noticeable difference in the amount of drag you get from the wing. From the I also just got this new wing. It's an ART799. And I was kind of wanting to try it, but I felt it would be safer to play it safe and, and use the um, 899, which I was more used to. So um, I didn't use the 799, even though I think it could have been good because as long as there's enough wind to get going, having that smaller wing is going to be faster and um, um, easier to control at higher speeds. So uh, anyways, I'm, I'm looking forward to trying that new 799. <clears throat> I'll report on that once I get to try it. But this day I was on the ART 899 wing. And uh, yeah, that new uh, high modulus carbon mast really uh, felt like it had less drag than the aluminum mast. I, I noticed a difference. It's, it's an expensive piece of equipment, but it makes a noticeable difference um, for performance wise. So it's ha happy with it. And uh, it's about, n I think it's a 90 centimeter mast, pretty sure. So um, definitely nice to have. Uh, low drag high speed wing but it's everything's always kind of a compromise so this is always a give and take the smaller faster foil will take more speed to get going so then um, if you're trying to get up and up on foil quickly then having a small foil can be hold you back and um, basically keep you from getting up on foil quickly when you need to uh, same thing with a smaller board feels nice on the wave it feels nice once you're up on foil Riding uh, is definitely nice on a smaller board, but it's also more challenging to start and get going and get up on foil because you you basically have to make sure you just get to the surface and stay at the surface. And then also with the wing, you want something that um, that's easy to handle, you, so you're not overpowered when you're flying on the wave. Um, easy to handle. Um, so a smaller wing is nice when you're surfing but then having uh, a bigger wing makes it easier to get going. So it's always a give and take and hard to have the perfect gear at, um, at all times. But you can see that um, this day was kind of a unique, um, special day on the weekend, beautiful weather, nice wind. Everyone was out, the kiters, the surfers, the wind surfers, the wingers, and everyone's out there having fun. So a beautiful day. Thanks for watching. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video about the perils and joys of wing foiling in big waves. It's not always easy, but it's always exciting. So it's uh, definitely one of the funnest things I know how to do. And I hope you enjoyed it too. I uh, hope to see you again next week. We come out with a new video every Saturday, so stick around. Thanks for watching. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure to subscribe to the Blue Planet Surf YouTube channel down below. And we'll see you on the water. Aloha.